Okay, so uh, if you've, you've just watched the video on how to install the ESP ME controller that we've done at my place, this is the next video in that series of how to wire it up. If not, this video is uh, one that you want to watch if you're looking to wire up some solenoid valves in the ground. We're about to do mine in my backyard. The valves that I've got in my backyard are a Rainbird DVF solenoid valve. They're a 25 mil female BSP threaded valve. These are the coils that come on them, which are a 24 volt alternating current coil. That's why they've got the same style of wire on each side. I've been running a DC controller, which is a battery operated valve, a WPX, which doesn't require mains power. I'm replacing that now with the mains power controller so that I don't have to replace batteries and I can use my Wi-Fi module and communicate with my valves using that. These are three coils that need to be replaced. So I'm gonna take the nine volt coils off and put the 24 volt coils on. And then I'm gonna wire them to the seven core cable that I've got in the ground. I'm gonna join them up with the waterproof connectors. And then we're gonna make a third video of me seeing if it works. So yeah. What we'll need for this part is wire strippers, multi-grips and or pliers, waterproof joiners or soldering kit and heat shrink connectors. The solenoid coils should already be on the valves, mine aren't. I've got these and the cable is already in the ground. Eye protection. Now the valve box uh, went in a while ago and it has not been looked after. So I might need to clean it up a bit. Uh, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, this is a base for a cricket set. For those of you watching in America, cricket is a sport we play here in Australia. This is also a cricket stump set. Now, this has been really neglected and we've had about 50 mil of rain here in the last, so two inches of rain in the last what, four days? Yeah, it was flooded. So the, this controller here is going and this is the cable that's been left here to hook up to the valves. Now, as I said in previous videos, it's really important to try and protect this cable. It hasn't been protected. It should be fine. Uh, if it was on a commercial situation, uh, you might get, I guess, defected or in trouble for it. Now, most of the time, once you finish putting in a solenoid valve set, you're not going to um, gonna go back into it later. Like it's once it's in, it's in. But it's important if you can to try and keep this box as neat as possible for future maintenance. Um, you won't appreciate a clean box until you need to go back in, um, and then you can't find anything. So, as I said before. We've got the DC coils here. So you can tell they're DC coils because they've got black and red cables on them. Um, the polarity of them is relevant. I'm gonna, well, I don't even need to cut them off actually. I'm just gonna remove them. Now, if you have a look here, this ball valve is in that direction, parallel to the flow of water. That means it is off. That's important to know because I'm about to take solenoid coils off of the valves. And if I, if I uh, turn these like that, and the water flow is on, those solenoid valves are going to turn on and I'm gonna wet poor Duffy and his beautiful expensive camera. So I'm gonna take all of these off. So this highlights that the DVF coils are interchangeable. Oh gosh. All of that water you see coming out now is coming back down the pipe from up the hill. Uh, you would have seen that in other videos we've done. So I'm gonna get the old coil, the new coils on there as quickly as I can and stop that water flow. So that you wanna make sure that that thread's nice and clean. The advantage of all this water pouring out is that the thread is nice and clean. There's no debris in there. Uh, you don't want bark chips uh, on there. It'll affect the ability for the solenoid valve to turn off usually. It'll turn on okay, but it won't turn off. If you don't feel resistance as well, when you t screw these on, yeah, that's right. 
That felt really light to turn on compared to, to, to screw it on compared to this one. Um, I'll show you the difference. Oh. There's an O-ring here. There's not an O-ring there. So that there will leak. I didn't realize there wasn't an O-ring on there. I'm hoping we can steal one from one of those, but it's interesting. I could feel it. There was no tension at all when I started screwing it on. That's how easy that is. How easy is it? It's easy enough that I can do it. All right, so that's all nice and neat now. No, it's not. We're going to clean it up. I'm going to get uh, some children's shovels <laughs> and clean it up a bit. All right, so that there is a bag of rocks. The bag of rocks is there to basically make a, a foundation for everything to sit on. Ideally, I would have put it in a lot earlier than now. Obviously, if you don't have obviously, if you don't have children or a children's spade set. You can use uh, an adult spade for this or a little hooky grabber tool, whatever this is, a fork. The, really all, the, all I'm trying to achieve is that get it nice and clean. Uh, and then we can put some rocks in there. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'll just start wiring this up while we're waiting for that to dry. I'm going to leave all this cable here like I did at the other part because I don't want to cut it short in case we ever need to do some repairs. There's no problem having it, a, a run of cable in the, in the box. Now we're going to need a little bit more exposed cable on this part of the job than up near the controller. So we've got all these. As you'll remember, we used blue brown red and green and we didn't use white and yellow now these wire joiners that we're using the theory is that you don't need to sheath these cables so i'm not going to i usually do but i'm very time poor at the moment so i'm going to just cut off the ends of these and wire them up So that we can get to our next meeting. So these, they have a bit of wire exposed. I'm just going to get rid of it. Just put my hand in some mud. So. It might be important to people to have valve number one, valve number two, valve number three, and all that in a certain order. Obviously we've got one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna leave four as four because it's a garden, but I'll know that one, two, and three are my three lawn valves. So as I mentioned before, there's no polarity with these. You really wanna stop them getting mud in them as well. So, I'm going to grab one cable from each valve. So there's one from that valve, one from that valve, one from that valve, and one from that valve. So they are the common. Every valve in the valve box must join up with the black cable. Why the black cable, you may ask? Well. In Australia, and I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure in, the, in other parts of the world, the black cable is the common. Uh, if it's not black, you'll find it's white. 
no one really uses the other colored cables for a common. Now I've got five cables there that I'm going to try and get into uh, one wire joiner, that's not gonna work. Nope. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna join three of them together in one wire joiner. by pushing that down. So that has pulled all the cables in. It's pushed silicon into the hole, so there's no water getting in there. And there's a metal piece inside that blue point or the blue connector. Have a look at that. That metal slides down past the cable. So the cables go there and it cuts past the plastic and it makes uh, a metal to metal connection. So what I've done is by joining those three together, so we've got one there. So we've still got to get the common from that valve joint. So now I just have to join in the black cable to those three. So I'm going to cut into that. Like that. And try and shove them all in one. If you had sheathed the cables, you'll find that this won't be a problem. When I'm working with these connectors, I like to have the blue uh, thing facing down so I can see if the cables have pushed all the way in. All right, that's good, so I can get those all in. So right now, I've got all of those cables pushed right to the back of the joiner. So I know that I could, they're all in there and I can get those pliers and crush that down. Oh. So that's the common wire wired up. And now we're gonna go through the process of just adding the, the colored wires. So we did blue then brown. So I'm gonna go one is blue. All we're doing is getting the cable, the, the active cable on the solenoid valve and the color that it, res that it responds, or that it joins with, pushing them in and crushing that uh, wire joiner like we did the other ones. Then we're gonna grab the active cable from the next solenoid valve and the next color, so blue, brown. I'm gonna run out of wire joiners. And then the active from here, which has just been sitting in water, that's great. Uh, green, grab another wire joiner. Shove that in. Make sure, again, that you can see that the green's gone right to the back. Crush it in. Now, you can test that you've done that correctly by pulling gently on those cables and they, they won't come out. That means that they've been captured by that. Uh, I need to go find another wire joiner to join up the red and then I'll come back and I'll terminate those two and show you what I mean with the uh, yellow and the white. So last one, red, like that. Yeah, those white and yellows, we've got a smaller wire joiner that we sell which is a lot cheaper. Um, you could use that to have wired up what I've done. Um, I didn't want to mess around. So I'm just shoving that wire into the joiner and just crushing that. Now that's protecting the end of that cable from getting damaged. This is what really should get done at the point of, um, at the start when you're installing a new irrigation system, if you're leaving the cables in the ground, cover them up with cables like this. And then you've got two spare cables that are there that are protected at the end that keeps the ends from rusting and getting dirty. Then you could get your zip ties, get your zip tie party out again, and zip tie that all up nicely, sit it somewhere wherever you want it. Um, and then from a wiring standpoint, that's done at both ends. And now I'm going to try and work out where I'm gonna put this valve box. So when you're installing a valve box, you want it to be 
that to cover everything that you're looking to access if you ever need to do maintenance um, and be able to turn the ball valve on and off. So you have a look here. If we we're like that and we, we can turn that ball valve, so that ball valve goes on that way. So we need to go that way, right? So this box probably isn't big enough to cover everything, including the ball valve. So in this case, I'm probably going to go get another valve box from the shop and put the ball valve in a separate box and um, we'll spread out those rocks on the floor. We'll have to make another video for that. We've run out of time for today. So that's how you wire up your solenoid valves. If you've got any questions about this and you live in Australia, obviously you can contact us on 0883636050. If you go to our website, there's a, a text chat option there. It only works with Australian phones, so don't text us from there. If, you get it, if you're not getting a response, that's why. Facebook Messenger, Instagram DM, all of that works, or you can send us an email at sales at waterpro.com.au or comments in the section below and we will answer any questions you have. As always, I don't take your attention for granted. I appreciate you watching these videos. I love doing them and I hope it brings value to you. Uh, so yeah, if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on anything we've got coming up. Uh, the season has just begun over here in Adelaide, so there should be a lot more content because the sun is shining. Have a great day.